Moss. I suppose you don't even know who the babe is either. <laughs> <laughs> it's blood. What? Chewing tobacco? Backy, man. What do you do with it? You're killing me, Smalls. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's time for a little bit independent comic industry news. Got a three or four topics here to talk about today, and uh, we're going to talk about Keanu Reeves' Berserker comic has apparently been delayed. I remember when they announced the new artist, I said, that seems strange that they delayed this comic. I'm surprised it's still coming out in October. Turns out it's not. We've also got news that uh, we've got the, the first five comics coming out from Bad Idea, the new upstart comic uh, company from Dinesh Shamdasani, one of my favorite uh, executives within the comic book industry. The work he did on Valiant was absolutely brilliant, and I'm very interested in Bad Idea comic, but I'll tell you why I'm not going to get to read any of them uh, when we get to that segment. And then last, we've got some more interesting news about independent comic sales. Indie comic sales have been hot. We've seen regularly uh, new comic sales, uh, new comics that were... Number one's going over 75,000, going over 100,000. Even Spawn, you know, 309 and 310, I think, hit 75,000 and then 100,000. Although I will say this, I think Spawn 310 uh, readers are going to be a little bit pissed when they find out that Ninja Spawn, who's on the very cover of that comic book, is not actually in the pages of it. But that's neither here nor there. That is not my problem because uh, I didn't buy, you know, I would have bought Spawn either way. So. If you bought the you know Spawn 310 for the speculation, I'm sorry, folks. You didn't get exactly what you wanted. But Rick Remender has a new series coming out from Image, and sales are huge on it. They actually broke the record for his uh, for a debut issue of his that's on the indie comic scene, and we'll kind of get to that. But before we get into all the details of the news, I do want to say, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for the notifications, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, give me a thumbs down if you don't. Let me know if you want more indie comic news here on the channel. And definitely give me some feedback in the comment section. I love hearing back uh, from you guys. So obviously, the Keanu Reeves Berserker comic, written, co-written by Matt Kent, and now illustrated by Ron Garney, is a bit, kind of there's a lot of buzz about this comic. But there's a big Kickstarter. We'll get into some of those details here in a second about this. And it, you know, it looks cool. You know, it's a big kind of sci-fi action comic. It's got a weird name from Boom Studios. Booms. Is, as white hot as anybody in the industry outside of the big two. You think about all the, the debuts they've been having lately, you know, with uh, we only find them when they're dead, seven secrets. Uh, there's, there's another one out there that, will, that was big sales. Oh, yeah, I can't remember right now. But obviously Boom Studios is doing, doing some things right. They got a lot of big creators with them. But we do know now that Berserker, which was supposed to come out in October, has been pushed back four big months to February. Like I said, when they announced they changed artists to back to Ron Garney, one of my personal favorite artists, and I think it was a good change, and I can't wait. I'm looking forward to this series. I thought, I believe I said it on the video, I was like, I'm shocked that they haven't delayed this uh, comic book. It's still coming out in October. They must have you know, changed artists as soon as they announced it. Uh, otherwise, he would have just started, and there's no way that they'll be able to meet this. So they have, they have announced that it will be delayed until February, and uh, this is what uh, was sent out to Diamond Comics via Diamond Comic Distributors to facilitate the change and maintain its high production standard, standards. Talking about the artist, Boom has announced that the in store date for issue number one will change to February 17th, 2021. Issue number two will now ship in March, followed by issue three and three in May, in accordance with the title's six week publication schedule. And then it says, uh, Berserker number one was originally solicited to debut, debut on October 7th. So there you go. If you were looking for this here in uh, you know next week, it will not be coming. It has been delayed for, for four months. I'm not surprised. I was surprised that they hadn't delayed it because they changed artists. And I think it was a good change. Obviously, uh, like I said, I think Ron Garney is a great artist. Doing, you know, uh, the man only only notice Bay is half a more half mortal, half god, cursed and compelled to violence, even at the sacrifice of his sanity. Sounds right in Ron Garney's artistic wheelhouse. So I, I think that was probably a good good idea. Now, as far as the Kickstarter, people wondering maybe if they're going to get their Kickstarter on time. All right, there, there it goes. It's, it, it's updating. It's well over $1.3 million. By the time this video comes up tomorrow, there should only be a few hours left in the uh, campaign. I imagine, I'll be surprised if it actually doesn't hit $1.4 million. That will be the final um, stretch goal for some more extra content. But what what was the original? 
when you're supposed to get these. Oh, here's the timeline. Berserker, this is the Kickstarter campaign where you can get the first uh, uh, three volumes that shipped to your house. Will be released in 12 epic comic book chapters and collected in three beautiful graphic no novel volumes, each containing four comic book chapters or issues. Each graphic novel is 7 by 10, 120 pages, full color book. Uh, through this Kickstarter, we are offering the opportunity to pre-order all three graphic novels, 384 pages total, and receive them directly to your home as they are released in September 2021, Volume 1, April 2022, Volume 2, and September 2022 for Volume 3. So I imagine, because this is 12, uh, 12 issues, it's going to be four issues uh, per volume. It starts out in February, February, March, April, May. It'll be made in May. But you can certainly still hit the September 2021 uh, timeline date for their Kickstarter campaign. So this should not delay that. I think everyone will still get their special release versions of Berserker that they ordered through Kickstarter on time. It's probably a good thing they gave, them so, gave themselves so much of a, a cushion there. Uh, obviously, this is through Boom Studios. Like I said, $1.4 million or $1.3 million. That's a huge success. I think it'll probably be close to 1.4 if it doesn't reach it and reach that final goal. So if you if you back the Kickstarter and you're you're worried about the delay, it's not going to affect you. It should still come on time. And I imagine that the you'll you'll get your your wonderful collector's edition comics right when you're supposed to. Now moving on to another independent comic. Bad idea is being run by Dinesh Shamdasani who was the owner and chief creative officer, one of the executives at Valiant Comics until, I believe, 2017, when there was kind of a takeover and he had to leave the company. And you know, when, from the time it launched, I believe in 2011 or maybe it was 2012, until 2017 and his exit, that was the best shared comic book universe in the industry. Bar none, it was the best comic book publisher. And I don't think it was even close. And uh, Dinesh Shambhasani obviously had a huge part to do with that. And he, he kind of stepped back. He started his own production company. I know that they were consulting on the Bloodshot movie. Obviously, he had a much better take on the character than the people that were left over at Valiant. They actually had to go out there and give him money, even though Sony had to deal with Valiant themselves. And uh, he helped him out. But then he, he he's back in the comic book game, and he's starting up Bad Idea. I believe Warren Simmons is on there. That would have been the um, their... Uh, what was he? I think he was, was he the publisher or was he was he was the the editor in chief. He was the editor in chief by the time he left, and he was obviously a great uh, great at controlling continuity in that. I don't believe that Bad Idea is a shared comic universe, and that does uh, hurt my feelings a little bit. But we do have some information on the first five uh, comic series that they coming out. Obviously, the Hero Trade kind of launched no notice. That was Matt Kent. Uh, it came out a, a few weeks ago. I, I believe it was. Uh, Received very well. I think there's there's a copy of the Hero Trade on eBay for like eight hundred dollars. That's how limited it was, and uh, so that that was pretty pretty cool. But we have details on the first five series. I'm going to tell you about the three. I think sound really cool and why I like them. And then there's two of them I'm, I'm not sold on. The first one, and and these this is the thing. This is why I won't be able to read any of these comics. These comics are not going to be distributed via um, via digital. You can only get them hard copy. And they are only being distributed to a very select, uh, what is it, independent network of distribution retail partners. A select set of shops. I think it was originally it was going to be 50, but it, it was expanded up to 100. It's not very many stores. These are going to be highly in demand if you like the creators. And they do have some great creators on these. And um, and obviously, Dinesh Shamdasani has a, a very good reputation amongst diehard comic book readers, uh, you know, it's a cool idea. It's very interesting what they're doing, and they're not distributing through Diamond. They're creating their own distributed my distribution network, I believe, direct to consumer. When I say consumer, I mean comic book shop. Um, but they will not be going through Diamond, and that's why I won't be reading these. Unfortunately, I'm the world's biggest Dinesh fan, and I'm actually a huge fan of Matt Kent and Robert Venditti, my favorite comic book writer. They're both with the, <laughs> They're both on the creator list on this, and uh, so it's 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 a little disappointing, but I'll probably get over it. Now, the first one we've already known about, this is ENIAC. This is kind of, I guess, they're going to be their flagship, Matt Kitt and Doug Braithwaite. One of the one of the better Valiant comic uh, artists in the past. You can see right here, great comic book art. I still think um, Tomas Giarella was their best artist. Obviously, Clay Man was their best artist. He, he started out there. But by the time that they finished up and um, 
Dinesh left. It was Tomas Giarello. I believe he was also announced to do a series as well, but they haven't announced which one it is. But it looks pretty good. It's got amazing you know, set in the future. We've already had the details about that one. And basically, 70 years ago, the United States unlocked the key to defeating Axis powers, but they also created a new threat, ENIAC, Electronic Numerator, Integrator, and Computer. Obviously, there's a computer system they use to win, the cold, or the, win uh, World War II, and it kind of turns on them and, and takes over the whole world. At least that's the way I'm kind of taking it. This is Matt Kent, one of my favorite writers. Very underrated. If you've never read his uh, Mind Management or his Ether, or his Ninja K, or his Rise series. Rise is my favorite comic story of all time, actually. Um, then you've actually missed it out, because Matt Kent wrote all those, and he's a very good creator. He also wrote, uh, what was it, Black Badge? That was really good. I also like Folk Lords a little bit, but not as much as the other ones. Doug Braithwaite, great artist. So this is kind of like their flagship series. It's going to be a, a limited series, one of four. And uh, these are all $4. Now, this is the really weird one. This one's by my favorite comic book writer, and uh, this is Robert Venditti. Now, this is one of the weirdest comic book pitches I've ever heard in my life because it is so ridiculously stupid. Like, no one would ever sign off on the plan that is, like, the idea behind this comic book, but it's so stupid it should be really fun. As you can see, there are men in mechanical uh, armor, and there are dinosaurs. So how do we get to that? Like, look at that. And the artist is Juan Jose Rip. He's got a very unique style. I believe, what did he, he, he illustrated the, um, the uh, Frank Miller RoboCop 3, or was it RoboCop 2 or 3, whichever one they made into a graphic novel. He's the one that illustrated it. He has a very unique style. Not my favorite, but he's certainly not bad by any, by any means. And this is, listen to this ridiculous pitch. Robert Menditti's going to pull this off too, because he's, he's my favorite writer. He's the best writer in comics that nobody knows about. The CEO of global energy conglomerate Greenleaf Oil has discovered a terrifying secret. The planet only has a decade or less of petroleum left before it's gone, but he has a plan to make sure his great-grandchildren can continue to generate maximum shareholder value. Got to get that money and secure his own legacy in the process. Rather than, to de than develop a game-changing renewable energy, energy source through the power of corporate innovation, Greenleaf has perfected the next best thing, time travel. So that a team of six field rack contractors armed to the teeth in individually customized mech suits can go back to the Cretaceous, Cretaceous period, tweak the trajectory of the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, and give mankind another 500 millennia worth of oil reserves. What could go wrong? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Don't kill off the dinosaurs. See what happens. Only all of human history, of course, because when Greenleaf's team of tankers come home, they'll discover that not only do dinosaurs never die out, They've kept evolving for another 60 million years, and they're more pissed off than ever. Now, that is absolutely uh, ridiculous. It, it's hilarious, but I think this is going to be fun. If, if you want to – this is going to be a popcorn kind of fun comic book. It's completely stupid that anyone would actually go back in time and uh, not kill off the dinosaurs so we could have more fossil fuels. But, you know, in, in, in theory, there would be more dinosaurs to, be, to make more uh, – uh, you know, make more crude oil, but of course, if they never died off, then there would no be no humans. There'd just be really dangerous dinosaurs. So this is a silly idea, but I guarantee it's going to be fun. Looks like it's going to be pretty cool. Obviously, these aren't colored yet. I wonder if this is going to be in black and white. Nope, Jordi Belair is colored. So obviously, these will be color colored. Jordi Belair is a very good colorist, so that should be great. This is a double sized uh, comic book. These are, I, I imagine, double sized means forty eight pages or fifty, and they're bi monthly. So, uh, you know, it's going to be three issues, but in total, it should be more like six issues worth of content. That one looks really good. I, I would absolutely read this because I love Robert Venditti. And this this idea is so stupid, it has to be fun. Now, the other one I think that might be the best one out of these, this is a one-shot called Walesville. It's an all-ages comic. You can kind of tell by the cover art. Matt Kent, uh, Adam Polina, I believe he was the one that was originally doing the um, – he wasn't doing Bloodshot. He was doing um, – he was doing that Rye, that new Rye series, uh, whatever, when Rye returns, when they go to the Dead Planet, maybe something like that. But he's got an interesting art style. I like it much better here than I did in there. It works very good as a children's all ages book. Looks really cool. And it turns out this is a cool premise. There is a, a whaler, and his name is Huawei. He's a, he's, in, he's a whaler. A whale swallows him, and he finds out in the middle of the whale there's a town called Walesville, 
and he, and he knows that his father's going to hunt down the whale and kill it, but now he has all his friends in Whalesville. It's one shot. I think this would be really cool. I would love to get this for my son, actually. I think um, I think he would love it. I would love reading it with him. Obviously, I'm not going to get to, and that's really sad. But, uh, you know, we don't get enough all-ages content. This looks like like it's probably really cool. Probably, you know, it's definitely something I would be interested in. I think this one actually might end up being the best one uh, as far as just quality. There's a couple other ones. This is from Marguerite Bennett. I can't remember if she was the one that was writing Batgirl when it was pretty good. I can't remember. This one doesn't interest me at all. It's like a 1970s Hollywood horror comic book. Uh, Hinato Gatiss is, is a pretty decent artist. Then this is another one that I think looks really weird, Sleigh Bells. And we got Santa Claus with, like, Uzis um, murdering people, I guess. I, this is coming out in July. I don't get it. It's a one-shot, and it feels like this would probably be a Christmas comic, but it's coming out in um, – in July 2021. I don't think I'm into Santa Claus shooting people. Call me old fashioned. I've approved people. <laughs> so I'm not interested in the last two, but I think the first three will be really good. This one shot, uh, Whaleville looks great. I imagine, um, what's, what was that one called? Tankers is going to be dope. Looks, it's too, it's so stupid. It has to be fun. Obviously it has a great crater with, uh, Robert Mediti. And then, uh, ENIAC is the one that they're really, um, been pushing since they announced the series or the um, announced line. Art looks great. Matt Kent's on it. He, he's a very good writer, so I think Eniac will probably be pretty good as well. Unfortunately, I can't read them, but there we go. That's what a uh, bad idea has coming out. And then the last thing we need to talk about we've we've been talking about how independent comic sales are white hot. You know, uh, we always uh, find them when they're dead. It was over a hundred thousand, I believe. Uh, the Department of Truth is. A, the Department of Truth is over 100,000 for its first issue. Spawn 309, Spawn 310, like the, the sales have gone up dr dramatically since the return from the pandemic. Uh, Rick Remender, you know, is probably one of the four or five best comic writers in the entire industry. Uh, just go go read his uncanny um, X Force. It's one of the coolest comics I've ever read. It's, it's certainly the best take on. Um, Best take on Phantom X is my favorite take on Deadpool. This is a really good comic book. I, it's unfortunate he's not at Marvel anymore, but he does a lot of really cool independent science fiction comics. This one sounds a little bit different. The Scumbag. Uh, what is it? They, this is, you know, it's outselling his uh, Black Science, which is actually a really good series, although I hated the the, the lead character on that one because he was a dickhead. Um. But they're they're kind of comparing this as the this upcoming humor series as the next Deadpool, promise, promising similarly uh, irreverent, filthy sense of humor and adult uh, adult humor and a murderous row of a list artists jumping in on each individual individual issue. Um, like I said, he's he's he wrote my favorite take ever on Deadpool. So this is probably a character, the scumbag, that he's going to do really well with. Sounds like uh, shops are interested in it. 75 or 70,000 uh, orders for a, a new image topic is huge. Before the pandemic, there were th kind of three big launches. There was, what was it? Um, Undiscovered Country, Charles Sewell and Scott Snyder with Kamo on the art. And I believe that one was like, it was like 25,000 for the debut. The next one was Decorum, Jonathan Hickman. That was like his new uh, image series after East of West. I believe that one was like at 32,000. And then there was also uh, Mercy by Mirka Andolfo as the writer artist. She actually have you know she has a huge artist. I believe that one was at thirty three thousand. Those were big launches, and now we've got <laughs> Scumbag hitting seventy thousand, Department of Truth hitting a hundred thousand. Over at Boom, we got uh, multiples hitting a hundred thousand, whatnot, whatnot. And I, I really like this. I'm glad. Uh, I think right now the quality is probably better on the independents. Not it's probably it's much better on the independents. It'd be, it's because of creators like Rick Remender and a lot of the the people that were exclusive on DC and Marvel. They aren't exclusive anymore, so they're they're going into uh, going into Boom. They're going to Image and they're creating some creator owned stuff. And they're you know a lot of it's more inventive and it's a lot more interesting. Like if you like Dawn of X and the stuff that Jonathan Hickman did in House of X Powers of Ten, go read Decorum. It's a bigger version of that. It's like him with no restraint. So uh, I, I think uh, they're taking advantage of the situation and we're getting better comics. So it's it's only better for the consumer. So there you go. That's uh, that's Rick Remender's The Scumbag. Uh, once again, very good sales. Rick Remender, uh, great science fiction uh, creator. I don't, 
the, I don't know if this is science fiction, but it, it sounds like it's going to be in the, the vein of Deadpool. And he, he certainly does that very well. So there it is, you know, uh, Berserker, been pushed back four months. Kickstarter's still doing great. Bad idea, announced their five comic books. I'm excited for three of them, not for two of them, but it doesn't matter because I can't read them anyway. And then the Scumbag Sales, uh, absolutely killing it. Set a record for um, for Rick Remender, who's one of the best writers in the industry. That'll do it for today, folks. That is your independent comic industry news. Let me know if uh, you need anything else, and I'll see you tomorrow.